start with talking about the title, which comes from, it does come from the poem, correct? It comes Damn from a Baudelaire poem, Damned Women, and he actually apparently wrote two poems, Damned Women. And this is the one, uh, Delphine and Hippolyta. And that poem, maybe we should also say, comes from this group of poems that um, uh, were called the Scraps, because they were censored out of the original um, collection of essays called uh, Feu de Mont, That's or right. Flowers of Evil. What's so interesting for me is the way he writes it is so beautiful and so much beautiful metaphors and going back into so much Greek mythology where females always often at that time still were really uh, also part of the wars. They were warriors themselves. They had different, different, a bit of a different role in than we have now. So in these poems he kind of talks about lesbian relationships and or about uh, how he uh, loves these vi certain women and hates them at the same time because they might not love him back. Yeah. But even though he might, you know, talks about sex or stuff that is happening at, at the, uh, in the poems, it's all hardly there. It's you, your own mind or your own, your own transport when you read the poems, which can make it really nasty and really uh, Illicit. Feeling more <laughs> guilty or something about it. And that's maybe why they got censored. The story is that Delphine and Hippolyta have this sex, they have, they have had sex together. Mm -hmm. And they're, um, Delphine is the powerful in this. She is fine with it, she has no problems. And Hippolyta is all confused about it and wonder what's going on. Afraid of the... She's afraid of what this means and how can you do this and how can she love this other woman. Delphine gets angry at the confusion of Hippolyta in the poem. And then she says, go now, go find yourself some stupid boy and give him his lust, your virgin heart to maul. Then, then, filled with honor, lift with disgust, bring back to me your mutilated breasts. So that's kind of, that's why they have these kind of mauler, maulers kind of sticking out of them. <laughs> It's not clearly in the poem, but I call those the malamachos. It's, it's kind of a Dutch expression, and machos is kind of the same as in English, but the malamacho is kind of like the funny, funny machos, or the kind of the stupidness, stupid machos, or the kind of the dumb force kind of machos. I wanted to create uh, a real kind of scene within this exhibition. That's something I what you said, like I've done different characters in shows where they're all kind of alone and by themselves being this certain character, but they've never actually put it into the next step. And I love theater where they actually are gonna start playing a role in the exhibition. They're not that, you know, in that character just on their own. They're interacting with each other. So um, that's why this is kind of a group of characters who create a whole circle and kind of make a world for where they are having their fight and their battle and their romance. So I kind of wanted to kind of enclose in this huge space, I wanted to make somehow a more of an enclosure. And I want to talk about Spasmax because Spasmax is a, a sculpture and, and, a, and a, an actor that has been in other shows of yours. When I made Spasmax was in 92 and at that time I was really into the idea of a parasite inheriting a space and like measure out the space and takes over a whole space and the only way Spasmax exists is by having the, he, his armature is outside it's the yep. walls it's the world around him that's how he can exist he cannot really exist on his own right I never had him actually being the armature for another sculpture so that's what he's going to do now yeah. I feel like over time I've been kind of doing a strategic reverse, like the pieces were always really naked and they're slowly going to get dressed up. Mm. And now, who knows what now? Now they're going to live together. <laughs> I don't know. The sculpture is very much made in a similar fashion as much of your sculpture over the years. And it, a lot of that has to do with that push-pull and the tension of the fabric holding up this interior structure and the way that makes suggestions about that form and these masters. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that, those ideas about transparency and tension and interior and exterior. 
it's really interesting to work this way because I, it's not that I draw something and make that copy of that drawing. It's a total world I'm diving into where everything is loose and there is not one singular point, still it comes back all together because the skin holds the armature together. So I'm playing with these different forces combined with what of course what the material does. So sometimes I like to show the, 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 the emptiness of the sculptures because they're so empty inside actually, even though they might be great masses. And actually, I think these are amazing, the height that you get out of these. Yeah. As, As we talked about, they came completely, they came completely folded up and nobody could believe the show was going to fill this space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, it, I guess that comes from being always a nomadic and traveling around and finding a way to still make pieces. And that's also a very theatrical thing. It's like, oh yeah, the show it comes on down. and uh, you know, goes in your backpack or it goes in a little thing and then it's like a tent and the whole thing yeah. gets put up for uh, costumes and you're completely transformed when, yeah. you, when you put that on. Um, yeah, so I, very, I work actually very instinctive and at some point I always uh, kind of have to step back even as an artist and let the piece tell me what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Because the piece is starting to get its life on its own. Mm -hmm. You know, I start, I start the thing and get it standing, and then I don't know. To, it tells me what it wants. <laughs> Such a bit of strap, but that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. And of course, I have a mission. What I want from that piece. So then the battle starts together between you and the piece. Yeah. <laughs> then the battle starts between me and the piece and other forces in the world. Right. To see how. How far can I push that? How transparent, can, how little sticks can I have in the piece? Or how empty can that center be and still be creating a shape? Or, um, you know, what about if the tension comes at the piece from the outside instead of the inner worries or whatever the thing comes from the inside creates the outside? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there is the element of clothing and dressing up, and that's why certain materials come in hand because I, I do think that your surface is not an it's not just an empty surface there's a lot of stories in your skin or in your clothes or whatever you're wearing yeah so that kind of comes that that, that I play with that in the, in the in the show and stereotype things you, you kind of pick up or you know like the tattoo like the tattoo or the pinstripe yeah or the tie or male fabrics or male. Because this gets to sort of the next question I was going to ask, which is about the pattern. Yeah. And how, because even in the world, Leave the world outside, outside is, you know, that even that's like an architectural pattern. So you have like sort of textile, but also architecture. And, and that that idea of pattern seems to also run through all of this work. Yeah. And how you, how you think about pattern. Well, I As use a, it to add another dimension to the piece. Like, it would have been very different if this was not a pinstripe, if this would have been jeans, for example, yeah. jeans fabric. Or if, uh, now I picked all the kind of skin colors uh, on top, it could have been, what about if that was all blue shirt, blue, mm -hmm. blue cotton. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of these kind of codes. As cultural signifiers. As, yeah. yeah. Who are the two masters? Well, the ultimate master, of course, is me. <laughs> <There's> no, <laughs> and, only one. and then I would say, I can, of, I think, uh, from a sculptural point of view, I would also say that uh, dealing with natural forces, sometimes even gravity, is, it's been always kind of a master in my world. And uh, I think in this show, of course, there is a more literal idea of maybe. Um, Two pieces in the show where we're having a battle and fighting it out but i think in a bigger picture it's even uh sculptural wise dealing with different tensions and the pooling power and the pushing power which has been all over in my in the pieces mm -hmm. and the, the fear of falling and the fact of like keep staying it on the whole power game i've been always dealing with with in gravity is as well completely in the in the show uh-huh so it's not so simple to say who's the actual master here. Okay, that's fair. <laughs>